talk to me instead of tweeting about me. Give you a chance to sell your book. Welcome. Well, Chris, good evening. Good to be with you. The book, The Central Thought, one vote, one seat, one judge, can make a big difference. So can one voice speaking truth to power, especially when it resonates like your own. Will you be that voice? Will you say playing nice with the Proud Boys is wrong? Well, listen, I've condemned the Proud Boys long ago. I think white supremacists, Klansmen, Nazis are ignorant, bigoted morons. Um, I also think that, that, that the American people care about the Constitution and Bill of Rights. They care about the Supreme Court. It was a big reason the president was elected. It was a big reason we have a Republican majority. And, and I think this vacancy on the court... It's the reason I wrote this book that was released just this week, because it focuses on the, the rights that, 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 that are precious to so many of us, free speech, religious liberty, right. the Second Amendment, and, and, and how, how all of them re really hang in the balance of the court. And I think that issue matters enormously, and, and, and for me, it's the most compelling issue. Absolutely. Now, I will exercise my right uh, and say, was the president wrong to go soft on the Proud Boys in the debate last night? Oh, look, I, I, I wish he had been much clearer in his denunciation. I was glad today that he, he walked that back. And, no, he and, didn't. and he I, look, I'm, I'm glad that he sought to walk it back. I'm glad his campaign sought to walk it back. But but let me be clear. Also, the, the press is completely hypocritical on this issue. Really? Um, the, 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 the press is partisan in this regard. So 10 years ago, mm -hmm. 2010, Joe Biden gave a eulogy for Robert Byrd, who was a grand cyclops right. of the KKK. Yeah. That's 10 years ago. You're really going to go with that? Oh, yeah. You I know you're a master it. debater, and uh, uh, Professor Dershowitz tells me that, you were the that, smartest, that, smartest student he ever had at Harvard Law. You're going to go with that weak-ass argument here? Byrd, who had a complete enlightenment about how hate was wrong, who changed his life, who spoke about it? Chris, who Chris have you his ever ways? eulogized a Klansman? I have. I'll, I'll a, give you another listen, example. No, no, no. Hold on. Right? That's your hold, example. Hold on. That's your example. You're going to no, use no, I'll that. I'll give you another one. Gonna, I, I give you a on. lot of examples. But hold on, because I don't want you to run away from the premise, Senator. I'm not you, but I'm not a fool either. He did it in Charlottesville. He did it with David Duke, the old Ted Cruz, who he called Lion Ted when he wasn't insulting your wife and your father. Tweeted, "Hey, you're better than this, Mr. President." What happened to that, Ted? I don't know if he changed or did just you change for some reason, Senator. Chris, you know, you know I'm, I'm glad you, you, you take tips uh, on, on insults from, from, from other folks. Really? Look, Am I insulting oh, you, sir? Oh, yeah. Oh, so. oh, yeah, you are. And, and, so. and you're enjoying it. That's, that's I am not good. enjoying you're, it you're at Chris, all. I'm not enjoying Chris, anything about this except having an opportunity for you to say the right thing at the right time. Chris, there was a time when CNN actually cared about being journalistic and talking about oh. facts. D Donald Trump broke you guys. I mean, you're just really? y your entire show, your entire network now is just how much you hate Trump. And, and really? y you know what? I, I think a lot of people like are interested in, you know, you said in your opening, I was very interesting. You said the, the president didn't say anything positive about the country. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought the most important moment in the debate last night was when the president made very clear that, that, that Joe Biden's policy agenda is shutting down the country, shutting down small businesses and shutting down schools. And our priority needs to be opening up the economy, bringing jobs back, getting kids back in school. And that's a very different policy agenda. We have had an enormous economic impact from this pandemic. We need to restart the economy. And I think the president and, and Joe Biden have very different visions. Joe Biden's policies, I think, don't work and hurt a whole lot of people. And when I'm back in Texas, people in Texas don't understand why the press is just like the only thing you talk about is how much you hate the president. I get that the president's Senator, not your friend. When you were on the campaign, do you want me to read through some of the things you said about Donald Trump? You want to talk about somebody who had a chance to talk about policy but just stuck with a person? Nobody did it more than you did. That's why he gave you the nickname he did and beat you down with it. The idea that you're going to put that on the media. My brother, you are the guy who went on Twitter talking about my naked ass, but you won't tell him when he's being an ass. <laughs> so why would you put it on me? Uh, Chris, I, uh, fine. You hate the president. I, I do get, not you, hate you, the you president. Know what? We, you are too smart to say something that Chris, stupid. Chris, I respect we, him we, as we, president. We, I want better for this country. And frankly, I want you to speak to that as well. You can't right, say Chris, that they have a policy difference Chris, over closing down the country. Please don't interrupt every sentence. The president you're, you're behaving. 
I, you know, I, I get that you want to interrupt every sentence, but 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 you're behaving like you were one of the debaters last night. It, it, we can have a respectful conversation and, and speak speak to each other civilly. Senator, or yell at me. How many times have I yeah. invited you on the show? Um, well, I remember one time you you tweeted out. Cruz is dodging my times. Phone. literally while I was on Fox. Is I was that, on Fox and yeah. Friends. You had invited me. Uh -huh. You attacked me. And by the way, I did a 15-minute interview with CNN. That I didn't day attack CNN you. Didn't I asked you to come on the show. And you Chris, said, I just did Chris, one with Chris, CNN. Every Chris, show you, you, is different. You literally put me on the screen and said... Ted is afraid to come on, and you invited me while I was on Fox. I mean, it was I, look twenty I mean, times. Let's actually talk you. about substance. I, twenty I, I times. Think your list, Chris. You're here right I, now because I'm I want right to give now. you a chance to speak, Chris. I, I'm here right now, so let's actually talk about good. Substance. Why do I care? And let's, let's because talk last about night you say the most important thing was when he talked about the timing of who shut down the economy uh, and when, which was no, always not his, the timing. Which was his what choice. the solution is right now. 51 million Americans have lost their job. Right. They want to go back to work. Small right. businesses want to open up. Restaurants yes. want to open up. They should. Movie theaters want to open they up. They should. People want to be able to provide for their families. They should. Moms want their kids to go back to school. Yes. And dads too. Joe Biden and the Democrats dads too. You know, are responsible dads care about for the shutdowns. Not just moms. Dads care too. And you that know why absolutely. it can't happen? And you know why it was wrong for him to tell your governor he was doing the right thing when he wasn't? And he had to learn the hard way? Same in Georgia. Same in Florida. Testing, Ted. Testing. Uh, look, testing, I, Ted. I am a huge proponent of testing. the federal testing, government but, has but not be been and the president clear. has slow walked I, I, I get, Go ahead. Chris, I get that your show wants to attack Texas and Florida and Georgia because they have Republican governors. We have also had much, much lower death rates than many other parts of the country. And 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 and, and it's it's political, the attacks you're making. I, I think what we should be focused on. Yes, testing. I'm a big proponent of testing. We need to do more testing. Right. Why don't but we? we need people to go back to work? Why don't we? And, and why don't we do the testing so people can go back to work? Why don't we do the testing so kids can go to school? Well, I'll tell you, I've introduced actually legislation that uh, in the in the Senate to create a tax credit for employers to test their employees what happened on a weekly basis. Why haven't you guys voted on it? Uh, well, the Democrats are blocking voting on everything. They've filibustered legislation multiple times. I, I don't think either Pelosi or Schumer actually want anything to pass. Mm. Are they, did they read Green Eggs and Ham? Uh, by the way, have they I, tried that one yet or no? They're saving that for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Do, do, do you actually want to talk substance? Or, or <laughs> we are or talking insult? substance. I just like to call out the hypocrisy when it's there because uh, the audience heads stay on straight that way because they're uh, not uh, like, wait, uh, this is the green eggs and ham guy. Is he talking about filibustering? You know, that's what this show is. But I have to tell you to cheapen it by saying I want to take political shots about covid. You know, I had it. You know, my wife had it. You know, my kid had it. You know, I network with people all over this country who are still suffering with it. You know, I hate that kids aren't in school or your staff should have told you I talk about it every night. It couldn't be less political for me. I don't want people to Except get sick. Chris, and if they tested more, Ted, they'd be better. Governors. And let me say something. There is something disgusting that Democrats are doing, that Joe Biden does, and that you do, which is you try to blame the, the, the people who've lost their lives mm. on your political enemies. And, and, and that's just no. not right. It, it, it's, no. it's not right I'm at all. I'm saying that when you hear, hear 200,000 right. people die, you don't say it is what it is. I'm saying that, when, but, but you know what? You it's particularly it not right, you Chris, you when your brother has presided over the state mm -hmm. with the highest death rate in the country. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm not. And I'm stand not. For I know your brother didn't want those oh, people yeah. to lose their lives, but you oh. shouldn't oh, play well, politics good. with. So you attacks. don't think he intentionally killed them? That's good. Yeah, that's no, very of charitable course of you, not. Ted. Of course not. But I do think we can have a very reasonable policy discussion about the policy mistakes in New York and New Jersey of sending COVID positive patients into nursing homes. I think that was that a very serious over the policy country, mistake. Right? That wasn't uh, no, the most it didn't vulnerable happen in Texas. population. It's one of the reasons why you're, the death rate in New York is four times the death rate in Texas. Texas, the place where the governor was, said that you didn't need to test and you didn't need masks, right? Okay, and the president that's, gave that's, a pat on the head. That's just a complete fabrication, yeah. and we test a lot. I've been tested The, 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 the same governor times. who said we didn't need to shut down, go out, and then he had to turn around and do it differently because cases popped all over the place? That guy? Is that what Chris, you're talking was about? It a was mistake, that too political? Was it a mistake when your brother implemented a policy that nursing homes had to accept COVID positive patients and endangered the lives of My tens brother of was the first one to say that was there a was a learning curve and that mistakes were made and they changed things as soon as they could. Well, but then now, don't look, be a hypocrite I could write about that it. Then, off then, as then, a political don't attack, claim, right? And, I could and, ask and you. I, I could ask look, you questions look, about only things that have to do with your family, but I'm not going to do that because the general Chris, proposition Chris, is I'm actually more. talking about public policy that was a serious mistake. And, but but and testing is not public policy? 
Testing is Chris, not please, I'm not interrupting you. Let me actually get a sentence without interrupting you. I think me. you've gotten many, sir. I'll show you the tabulation of who spoke and how much I, in a segment later. Go ahead. Chris. Yes, sir. This pandemic has been an enormous challenge mm. across the country. I, I think Democrats and Republicans are trying in good faith to keep people safe. But I think we can also have reasonable policy discussions about what works, A, to keep people safe, but B, to get people back to work. And I think people want to go back to work. You know, this week, Disney announced 28,000 layoffs. Now, Disney is not American a right wing Airlines? company. They're, they're American very Airlines liberal companies. But what's interesting about Disney, what is interesting about Disney mm -hmm. is they're doing the layoffs in California because California shut down the theme park. They're not doing the lay layoffs in Florida because Florida opened Disney World. I mean, it, it's a clear contrast. Where Democratic politicians so in California that, have shut so, it down, so and they're laying cost off people, the people, people where their they're jobs. out of business and not the place that they're in business. And you're saying that's political? No, I'm saying the oh, policies so of saying? Democrats to shut the economy down are bad policies that hurt people's lives. What do you and do when layoffs people are getting are the direct sick? Result. What do you do when people are getting sick, Senator? And you can't well, you test them. You don't send and them. And they in don't wear masks. Homes. And you tell you them not to. You don't send them into nursing homes. Oh, so so the nursing homes was the sum total of the entire problem in the country. That's what well, it was. It, it, it led 7 to New million York having 33,000 deaths compared to Texas having 15,000 deaths. And Texas has 50 percent more population than New York does. And what about all the cases that they had? And how so many people got be, sick by be, the refusal to shut down businesses? You, you say know you want to open them up, but you won't discuss how. You say you objective. introduced a bill, but you won't talk about the president and his failure the testing has to be done at the federal level, Ted. You know this. Well, you understand a little bit about state economics. You know the governor can't do it himself, right? Well, actually, governors have taken the lead and have had gr much greater success. Texas' record on every they level is much, to. much better than New York and New Jersey and That's Massachusetts not true. Look at New York's numbers. Look at the rate every day of testing. 33,000 deaths puts versus 15,000 They deaths. were the hub of where people were coming. You guys want to and celebrate China. You let in 40,000 people. It had already moved to so, Europe. So, Chris, you let in tens of thousands of people. They went you, to the hubs. That's why we got so sick. Does it trouble you at all that New York and New Jersey had the highest death rates in the of country? Of course. Does that, does that make you plausible? It all say, troubles gosh, me, Ted. And to watch but, but, guys but, like you stand by Chris, and stroke your beard you like think, a wise man instead of telling Chris, the president to get on it when you Chris, have power. How about tell your brother problem. to get on it? My brother will stand for his own record. Why don't you talk to the president the way you talk to my brother, Ted? You afraid of him? You think he'll smack you down at home? Oh, is that yeah. what it is? I'm like he's shut you up in the primary? You, you guys not are the really Cuomos. tough. I'm talking about the president. My brother's <laughs> not the president. I'm talking about the president. The one who called you a liar. The one who said your wife was ugly. That guy. You know, the guy now who you won't say anything about. I, I recognize that you like it. You actually wonder why you don't have a lot of Republicans that want to come on your show. I have more than any other show. And yell at me and in, insult. I'm not, insult I'm me. not yelling at you. I'm raising fine. my voice to match your own because you, you want to play games, and, Ted, and, and me. people that's are okay. dying. That, 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 that's okay, Chris. I, and you're perfectly fine to scream and yell because you know what? Oh, but you don't. You're doing it because you don't want to discuss the substance. Like I had you, I, you invited me on the show things. to actually talk about the Supreme Court and talk about the book One Vote Away, and, and instead you just want to repeat insult over and over and over again. Oh, but you're not. Actually talk about you just bring up my for brother for half the interview because you're such a fair guy. You well, play no, it so you, straight you, down you, the middle. You were, right? you were just playing in a biased way, attacking the president's Texas, Florida, not the top Georgia, of the food chain. coincidentally happen to be Republican states when, when the death rates they are markedly worse, and we should ask, when the death rates are markedly worse, worse in some states than others, we should ask a reasonable question. Yeah. Were the Why didn't the president the help sooner? Were the That's the question. That Why didn't the that? president and, help sooner? And, and, Why didn't and, and he help the, way, the places ask, that got you hit talking hardest about the president specifically, when they were all talk about Democratic. The president specifically? Was it the right decision or the wrong decision when the president halted air travel into and out of China? Right, right and, decision. Should have done right it sooner decision, even and should have not let 40,000 people repay Next question. Okay, okay. So I agree with you on that. I called for him to do it the day Next before question. he did it. But Joe Biden denounced it as no, he racist didn't. and xenophobic. No, yes, he, didn't. he did. No, he didn't. And Nancy Pelosi I'll bet that you, I'll bet you brought dinner. up a, a vote I'll bet in you the dinner, House Biden where, didn't denounce for it. Democrats to, to stop the ban. Not I'll a, bet you dinner. That Biden didn't say that. You were right about he, Pelosi, he, he and it was a bad did. move. You're wrong. He, he most You're right about did. Pelosi, and, 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 and it was and a bad way, move. And, and, and by, by the way, Chris, you know, your colleagues at CNN, this is sort of the, the, the talking point. I, I, I with, with Jake Tapper, actually read the Biden tweet to him. I don't have it in front of me right now, but, but 
He denounced it as racist and xenophobic. The New York Times, who you just had Tom Friedman on, had multiple articles saying saying it was a mistake. It was terrible to halt air travel into and out of China. You heard what I just said, right? I can right? tell you I chaired a hearing in the you Senate what I just said? where the expert te- – so you said – I agree with you now, yeah, but you know what? Now, the Democratic I've only said Party this. didn't say it then. I'm the not Democratic part of the party. The Democratic Party denounced it Let me ask you one other then. thing while I have you that I think is almost as important as what you say about when we're shutting down and when we didn't because that's in the past. What the president said about the election. Senator, seriously now, I'm happy to joust, uh, but not when it's existential, okay? Uh, That's why I come at you about the pandemic, because for me, I don't play politics with it. I'm a little insulted by that, but I'll make it. You don't play politics, you just only attack Republicans over it. But you're not playing politics. I have Republicans on all the time who are willing to come back all the time. You attack Texas, Florida, and Georgia. No. Is there there anything similar about those states? Please, Senator, you sound silly. I talk about people and how they're struck in those states all the time. I care about them, and I want them to be better, and I don't want them to be sick you, you of through what I did. So you, that's you, you why. You want them I do it with Democrats, Democrats too. I do no, it with no, them, too. No, Anybody no, who's look, not you, doing the right thing when it comes he, to he, I talk about the, he, the kids in class as a national problem. But let me ask you this. The president has been hinting very strongly that if the election doesn't go his way, it will have to have been fraudulent. And you just heard Tom Friedman and his concerns if your state and the other states certified their results, as they always do, and say, no, this is it, our count's legit, we'll check as the law allows, but it's legit, and the president says, no, not good enough for me, I don't want a transfer of power, what would you do? So, that's not going to happen, there's going to be a peaceful transfer of power, but, but let me say something. I wish that the two political sides actually had conversations where we listened to each other. I have to admit, it, it was surreal listening to you and Tom Friedman talking about what, what you think Trump is going to do on the election. Because from my perspective, I, I think it's projection. I think the one that is going to challenge the election in all likelihood is Joe Biden. Biden Hillary said last Clinton night he'd accept the results. But, but Hillary Clinton told Joe Biden, under no circumstances should you concede defeat. And, and not only that, you know, said. it's interesting. Tom Friedman talked about Bush versus Gore. So I was one of the lawyers who represented George W. Bush and Bush versus Gore. There's a chapter in, in my book, One Vote Away, that talks about Bush versus Gore and, and, and elections. And by the way, it was Al Gore who challenged the outcome of that election. It was Al Gore who yep. filed litigation. Yep. And, and, and it took 36 days of chaos. It went to the Supreme Court mm-hmm. twice. And ultimately, it was resolved. Bush. Yes. The, the ballots were counted four times. Bush won all four times. And mm-hmm. at the end of the process, there was a resolution. Yes. It's one of the many reasons why nine justices on the Supreme Court matters, because we need a resolution. And what my book does, I'd just like to say a second about it, if I could. I haven't stopped you. But, Keep talking, okay. brother. Be- before, before I was in the Senate, I, I was a Supreme Court litigator. Mm-hmm. That was my profession, was arguing cases at the Supreme Court. Each chapter in the book talks about a different constitutional right whether free speech, religious liberty, the Second Amendment. And, 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 and what I would say, look, I, I recognize a lot of your listeners are of a different political uh, affiliation than I am. And, yeah, and but I invited you we're, anyway. We're a, so big, please finish we're your a point. big country. So, so my point is, if folks at home want to actually understand why so many millions of people are deeply concerned about protecting free speech and religious liberty and how those rights in the Second Amendment, how they hang in the balance, mm-hmm. What the book does is it tells the inside story of what's happening in the just, with the justices, what's happening with the courts, what's happening with the landmark cases on those rights, many of which I help litigate. And, and, and I do think on Bush versus Gore, for example, we could easily find ourselves in November and December and January in the midst of nationwide litigation. It could be brought by Joe Biden or it could be brought by Republicans. Either side could bring litigation. And, and I would encourage folks, if, if you want to understand the issues more, even if you don't necessarily agree with me, I, I think the book is a helpful tool to understanding these issues and what's really going on Good. at the court. And um, I hope and, you and stand by what you, you that, said about the peaceful transfer of power. I hope if you can I, see you know that there's an obvious I, I hope, political play, I hope you speak up, Senator, because that's so, why so you're and I, and I hope Joe Biden does, too. If Joe Biden loses, I, I, I hope that he said he'll accept the results. Well. If he doesn't, then he's a liar and he's got to be called out as the such. Unless they can bring up a material issue on either side. Then obviously, you've got to have the system be put to work. But that's not what we're talking about, at least not yet. Senator Ted Cruz, appreciate you finally taking the invitation. <laughs> Good luck with the book. The book is One Vote 